Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome to my former block, Wall Street, where it all went down. For me, literally, and for the country, this is the first capital uh, where George Washington got sworn in, the first executive branch was here, the first Congress was here, the first judicial branch was here. So it's kind of, for me, where it all went down. And if you look over there, you're gonna see the New York Stock Exchange. And that's kind of, you know, where the nation's money flows. This is where it, kind of where it all goes down, the New York Stock Exchange, where people can get very rich very fast or go very broke very fast where the big boys play uh, we're gonna get up out of here gonna leave George by himself to his lonesome we're gonna go walk down my block where I used to live right near where I used to work literally on Wall Street so come on come join me all right when I worked at Strook I'll be walking this way but then I, when I worked at Goldman I would come from where I used to live 67 wall and walk past everything over there towards the World Trade Center Goldman Sachs headquarters right across the street from there so and when I would be coming back from work, you know, to the left, you have the Trump building. Not the Trump Tower, but the Trump building. This is one of his, I don't, I don't, I don't think he owns it anymore. I don't really know too much about it. There's a lot of tourists that come here and take pictures in front of it, especially when the election first happened. But as you see, it's pretty empty now. To the right, you have Tiffany. I think, I think this is their headquarters, one of their headquarters. Uh, the Tiffany building. It's a lot of a lot of history over here. <laughs> Mess around and buy out Deutsche Bank. We're gonna we're gonna pass Deutsche Bank and they're going bankrupt soon. So. <laughs> oh, on, on the right we have Cipriani right here. On the right is the famous hotel and event space and a really good restaurant here. A couple of them in New York. I think they have a few places outside of New York as well. But they, this is the most uh, the biggest and most famous. And there's a lot of. Uh, like celebrity events and red carpet events here. Wall Street became famous because it used to be literally a wall that kept everyone on this side and the Native Americans out. And I mean, Wall Street, this is where everything was, slaves were traded on Wall Street. So for me, it was pretty, it, 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 it kind of comes full circle, right? To, to have some of my ancestors who were slaves here traded, literally come down the street in shackles and chains. And for me to be here working, living, you know, free and you know do, doing my thing and having the opportunity to make my family and pass the torch um, you know in the most positive way I can so yeah so so yeah there are uh, lots of trading going on um, all the way up to the, the 1800s I believe and then all the big banks were here on here this is one side of my building and then the other side of my building the 67 Wall Street you can see there's the Munson building I, I believe this is a bank for uh, Brown, the, the Brown Brothers Investment Bank, that was the, their headquarters. So my lobby was literally at the headquarters of the bank. That was pretty cool. I lived here for a year, up here. See through. <laughs> yeah, 67 wall. So it, it was funny when I have my, uh, when my, 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 my family would come visit me or something, they'd say, oh, what's your address? Like, oh, 67 Wall Street. <laughs> Not many people in the world get to say that. It's pretty cool, cool experience, cool, cool time of my life. Once we get passed down here, closer to the, 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 the seaport, right on Water Street. So I moved from Wall Street a block over to Water Street, Water and John, two blocks over because it was a newer building. <laughs> and I had a better view and higher floor. So after my first year, you know, as an attorney, upgraded a little bit. Uh, I'm just taking you guys to my, this would be like my commute. We can go, let's see if we can get into the lobby. I'm not sure, it's a little late. Right about now, what time is it? About 11 o'clock, so it's usually like my second lunch break <laughs> at the law firm. Come here, get, get, get uh, I would either come like work out or take a break from the office, work out or something, or go grab some food, walk around, clean my mind, uh, maybe for an hour or so, then come back to it. But that's, this is it right here. That's where I used to work. Uh, when the, I think the 36, 37, that's crazy. I think I used to sit, like, actually work on the 37th floor. <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> There's a couple companies in here. Where I worked in here is uh, Strook & Strook. It's a, uh, a law firm, uh, one of the bigger law firms in the country, uh, in New York. So, yeah, that's my old, old little stomping grounds. I'm gonna take you over here uh, by the seaport. So I would come in, like clear my head after, after drafting some legal documents and whatnot and working on legal matters. The question was, why would someone wanna work on Wall Street? Because you get the best training. You get, you get to work with the very best, the best of the best. The, <laughs> the funny thing about it is, you know, when you're working down here and then amongst these buildings and whatnot, you don't 
there's not there's not much room for error <laughs> you know so the pressure is high the stakes are high you know you're you're doing uh these billion dollar deals you know you, you can't really mess up <laughs> i think that intense training you know prepares me prepared me for you know life even as a consultant right that's kind of it was kind of sweet because you know i'll be working till three four in the morning on a regular as a lawyer uh, you know making sure and you have to be sharp every hour of the day you know and when you get to other positions it's like oh okay i'm done it 11 p.m. Not you know not not three. That's cool. Light day. The only time I've worked harder than working as an attorney on Wall Street is working for myself. You know, at least some days you get you get kind of get off. You know, when you're working for someone else, you kind of have to take a day or off or an afternoon off or something. When you're working for yourself and you're building up your own brand, your own company, you know, you have this sense of paranoia that every hour, am I being the most productive? that I can be? And if the answer is no, let me, you know, get more productive, right? So it's just that sense of paranoia. Am I doing all I can do? You know, it, 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 it's working, you know, 16 to 18 hours every day enough. Is that, and not really, right? You want to be working all the time, but then you have to balance sleep. You have to balance working out and eating correctly. And, you know, make, so you get to have that pool, uh, make sure, you know, you're, you're, you're well balanced. That, that prevents burnout. You don't want to burn out. A ton of fairies down there, the president, I used to watch the president land from my office. That was pretty cool whenever he would come in town. But, but yeah, no, it, it's, uh, I think it was, yeah, my, my first summer, I was summer here in 2015. So Obama was still president, so he came. And then uh, once Trump got in office, and he would fly in. So it'd be pretty cool to watch, watch them fly by my window. Yes, yeah, this is a seaport. This is a seaport. It's, uh, I have a bunch of fun here with my friends. In summertime, it's nice to have a movie theater and a outside lounge and a bunch of fun shit. I used to hang out here with my friends on the weekends uh, or during the weekdays, especially me and Alex would come here and just hang out. They had uh, you know, some dope games and like the big Jengas and stuff during the wintertime. They have big, you know, Christmas lights and trees here, and it changes with the seasons. Um, but they encourage a lot of like outdoor hanging out uh, during the summertime when the weather's nice. It's pretty dead right now. This is Monday night at 11 o'clock. <laughs> now we're never going to walk to towards my other building, the last place I lived in when I was in New York. I had a ton of fun. Throw a lot of parties. We used to call it Third Saturdays. It sees like 100 people in my apartment. <laughs> Me and Alex, and just have, a, have, a, have a ton of fun. Just hang out and you know meet great people my, my theory is that you know, if you hang around really good people chances are they also hang around really good people so if you invite your friend or your good friend and you tell them to invite three to four of their good friends chances are you get a room full of really good people who are doing dope stuff you know i mean i was never ever the smartest one you know in in, in, the, in the group you know we had i have some friends that are literally geniuses <laughs> you know friends that, that make a ton uh, friends that you know are all over doing doing cool stuff. I try to have a nice, healthy balance of you know our creatives and artists and Wall Street types and lawyers and bankers. Uh, we had a bartender, had some music, be rocking. It, it started off as a pregame, but no one ever really left. <laughs> so yes, we're gonna be waiting across the street right now. But that's the building right here on 80 Water. So this is uh, used to be my old lobby where I used to live. Yeah, see, I think my doorman remembers me. <laughs> Say what up. What's going on, bro? What's up? <laughs> Nothing, man, just hanging out. Just um, back in Chicago, for the most part. Come taking a tour with my friend. Uh, some of the old something ground. <laughs> How's the building? You, you good? Same old, same old. Okay, I see. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, you got the, the tie on, the vest. Okay. <laughs> uh, we just say I'm going to say what's up, bro. I right, have a good one, man. Good. Uh, likewise. The building, it was brand new when Alex and I moved in. You know, we had the two bedroom, two bath. Uh, for, for those who don't know, Alex is like one of my good friends, one of my, one of my best friends. Works on the, you know, works on the street. Works in investment banking for J.P. Morgan. Went to Harvard Law School from Long Island. Good kid. Uh, you know, so so we, we moved in here from 67 Wall Street, uh, and yeah, we were the, the first ones in. Uh, it was you know brand new, new, new appliances, new furniture. It was I mean had great views. I mean we had a pool, we had a full gym. We used to have networking events on the rooftop. But yeah, just had super, you know, met some great people in there. Yeah, I'm still friends with a, a couple people that live there now. So I still live there. So it's um, 
It's all good. I can't say I regret it. The rent was high as hell. <laughs> but that was, that's about it. That's, uh, that's the only thing I didn't like about that building. But you know, when you're in New York, what can you do? What can you do? Crazy how a, how a kid from the south side, from 71st, can just come be here, man. It, just, it, it, it kind of blows my mind. You can't think about it too long, then you get complacent, right? So you gotta enjoy it for a little bit, you know, and uh, I always remember that there's more out there. The bigger bag to get, more fun to be had. Better cities, bigger city. Well, no, ain't no better city. Maybe Chicago, but it's kind of crazy. My diet was the, the the street carts. You know what I'm saying? I was I was eating you know the rice and chicken and, uh, and the hot dogs. I mean that was five dollars and it filled me up. You know I couldn't really afford much else and I was just hustling. But I, I wanted to be here and I wanted to experience what it was like. And then I guess you know subconsciously once I was here, I got to Miami and I want I guess I wanted to come back because <laughs> I ended up coming back here for uh, for law school and working on the street. But yeah, it's just kind of crazy just to think that you know from. A kid eating babas on 71st, you know, then they come to New York and, you know, being able to afford one meal a day from street cart food, you know what I mean? And uh, now we're eating a Nobu when we want. And that's just, just the beginning. So it's just, you know, just one of the, it's just kind of crazy. It's, crazy. It, it, it's humbling because of a friend of mine, he was like, you know, hey, fly out for my birthday. You know, it's my birthday out and I'm trying to have all my guys out here hang out. I'm like, cool, say less. And I booked a flight and, and get, came here, whatever. I didn't think much of it. You know, it hit me. Someone, you know, told me that it's, uh, you know, that's not regular. People just don't book flights the day before. And to me, I'm like, that's, that's, you know, it's humbling, it's grounding, but, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not chartering jets yet, you know, so, so until I'm not, you know, it's, it's again, it's, it's always levels to it. You can stop whenever you want, enjoy the process. So I don't, I don't know why I would ever want to stop. This is the Oculus. So this is a huge mall. It was built on top of the, right next to the 9 11 Memorial. So yeah, I would come here because in the summertime when I was working at Goldman, it would be super hot outside. So I had to walk that walk we just did, and then I would come here to cool off some AC instead of going walking around outside. I usually have the AC blasting. And in New York, how you have, you know, these beautiful places. You now we're in the Oculus right now, right outside the World Trade Center in New York City, downtown, financial district. You know, this is a billion dollar building, right? It's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, you have you're always one train away from the hood. Literally one train away from uptown, right to the Bronx. And it's some people that never leave the hood. They never, they never take that one train down here. I didn't time that. I wish I was that good. I didn't time that. <laughs> but this is but it's crazy to me because just like in Chicago, back home on the South Side, and it's, it's crazy because it's red. The red line. People are one train away from going downtown, but they just don't. They just never take, take that train. So I always remember, man. You just, just take that train and come see something different because you can be in the hood and then take a train, wake up 10, 20, 30 minutes later, and now you are damn near, you know, in, in, in heaven, all this white and lights and stuff like this, crazy. And you can be at all times, one train away. All right, I'm done. <laughs> it's super important to, uh, to be curious and to see the world and to take that train or a plane or anything um, down. That exposure is key. You get exposed to millions, how are you going to be a millionaire? 
you don't get exposed to billions, how are you gonna be a billionaire? Look. Like if that'll inspire you, man, to, to, to soar to higher heights, I don't know what will. Like this is built. Man made, not that long ago. This is the World Trade Center Memorial, right? Wow, how look at that. This, you know, and the funny thing is, I actually moved to the hometown of the architect that made this in Spain, in Valencia. Didn't even realize it. And I was walking around Valencia and was like, man, this looks familiar. This looks like the architecture from the Hopkins from where you should live. And if you don't get out your comfort zone, go somewhere new. I, I hear people saying, oh, I, you know, I don't want to go downtown. I don't, ain't nothing for me downtown. Ain't nothing, bro. Like, you don't know what's for you downtown. You don't know. You never know who you're going to run, run into who's going to change your life, what's going to inspire you to be that best you. Never. You never, you never know where that inspiration can come from. I'll tell you where it's not going to come from. Goddamn. <laughs> Block in your porch, you're not gonna come from there. Do something different. Go take a trip, take a. You don't, you don't, you don't even have to leave the city, whatever city you're in. You can go right in a different part of the city and, and be inspired by something, right? So we're here by the pool, and as you can see, we got a girl fondling the balls. That's a pretty common thing, I guess. I don't know why they do it, um, but it's a tourist thing. Why you want to grip pools and balls, but hey. Alright, so uh, DK Smith. This concludes our little New York trip. Me and my team, our sales is a success. They don't call it the city that never sleeps for no reason because I didn't get a lot of sleep. <laughs> well, I was here looking forward to sleeping on this plane. Thanks for tuning in and, and, and enjoying. I hope y'all enjoyed the show or whatever this is. <laughs> So you can follow me at MR underscore DK Smith on Instagram. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Enjoy the rest of y'all night. <laughs>